Hello and welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, Director of Sales for Bone Adhesives. And I'm Rob Johnson for Bone Training. Rob, it's been a long time. Matt, you know what? That was one of your best openings ever. You see, that break was good for all of us so far. I think it was my very best one. You killed it. Yeah. You absolutely I, killed it. And Flawless. I, it's crazy. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, we had a little bit of a break for the first time ever. And, um, you know, while I was on break, I was, you know, you shouldn't read your reviews. Um. I, I, w- I wasn't intending to. I was just scrolling through a Facebook site and somebody goes, uh, gosh, what podcast are you guys listening to right now? <laughs> One guy says, uh, uh, on the floor with Wayne and Rob. The other guy he goes, uh, yeah, I try to listen to them. But uh, I, I turn it on and it is two boomers talking about uh, their musical tastes. And uh, so he was out real quick. That guy. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. he came back. He might have said that, but you know, he's a closet listener. Maybe. Okay. I feel if like he doesn't he... like our music reviews. Mm-hmm. Wait till he hears our reviews and our, uh, what we think is our favorite Elvis movies that we'll do at the end of this show. No, just, just so we don't lose everybody. We won't do that, <laughs> but I, I'm going to tell you something. And I feel very comfortable saying this. Elvis Presley was the best looking man that's ever lived. No question. Look, look, look at Elvis Presley and then look at yourself in the mirror. You look like a pig compared to Elvis Presley. Me personally? No, you and me. Uh, uh, Many of us. Why did you say you? Well, you said you. He should have said we. Well, I should have said we. Yeah. Yeah. We would have been, we would have been nice. Probably. You. Yeah. You know. Well, let's uh, listen. Look, I know I got to lose weight. No, it's not you. It's not you. I know that. I know that. You don't have to lose weight. I wouldn't like you if you lost weight. (laughs) I'd probably just be jealous of you. Uh. Oh, that's your one thing you got on me. Yeah. Huh? Well, at, least, uh, <laughs> at least my pants are smaller than his. Yeah. Okay. So anyhow, but what it tells me is, um, all right. So maybe, you know, we got a lot of young, younger listeners, you know, I mean, let's face it, we're on the older spectrum of the scale. So it needs you to kind of, uh, you know, trim down in your, in your, uh, in your age, like, you know what I mean? uh i'm 61 there's not a lot of changes is going to be made now i think a lot of that is no. kind of sailed you yeah. can't be you can't get, get getting younger for our demographic i you know i always thought i was very young i actually think you are very young at heart i think yeah. you are thank you yeah but you know you too you, i would you're... never think you know i'm telling yeah. you for a 70 year old dude you're <laughs> you're getting you're getting it done <laughs> I'll tell you what. Do you feel what are you, 60? Um 61. Wow. <laughs> we're, we're 125 between us. How old are you? 124. I'm 63. Oh I know it's shocking, isn't it? Yeah. You, you know what? Yeah. I I the other day um I was at a sales meeting and there were some younger guys there and you know we we're you know getting together and what have you, which means, you know, a few drinks. And I, was, I said, look, man, I'll drop down and do push-ups right now with anybody. Oh, boy. Hoping to God that nobody would take me up on them. And yeah. and nobody did. But just the other day, like a couple of days ago, I thought to myself, oh, I don't know, I'm feeling like I'm pretty decent shape. I wonder how many push-ups I could really do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't, it's not good. So were, were you doing a regular push up or were you doing the old man push up on your knees? Oh, get out of here. Are you kidding okay, me? Okay, yeah. I'm just Oh my gosh. You ain't that old. No. Who, so you, I, were I, born that, in, you were born in 59. 60. Okay. July July 15th, you know, if anybody oh, wants to uh, okay. for, Yeah, for, yeah, for, okay. Now I see it cuz Pauline the fishing presents. 
Pauline's 63 right now. She'll be okay. 64 next month. Okay. So she was born in 59. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Okay, now I get the... I get the math right. Right before the show, like literally a half hour ago now, I got stung on the neck by a wasp. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if you get woozy. Yeah. You know, see me go down. Yeah. yeah but, the cow, yeah. You know what's happening. Yeah. Chris, okay. keep your eye on him. Okay. So we're going to try to oh, th- look. Oh, wait a minute. One more thing I want to talk about. Uh, this you go, you, sales you meeting go. you were at. Yep. Um. You shoot a little pool, I heard. Man, I guess it gets out quick, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm going to give you a little advice. And you should know. I'm surprised you didn't know this. You never shoot pool with a guy who's in the service. Never. Oh, my gosh. First of all, he won. It was two to two tied, okay? Uh-huh. I'm going to give him that it was two to two tied. He really, he should have one shot didn't count. He should have lost. That's okay. I'm not. I'm not complaining. But it was two to two tight, and he and he and he won on the last game, three to two. I would go against him anytime, anywhere, any place. Oh rematch. boy, really? Yeah, please. It, 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 he got lucky. Uh, I was. Oh. I, I have no problem with that. Well, you're kind of an army brat too, so you. I, I grew a up time with a pool table. I I played pool growing up more than I'd like to admit. So. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm any good though. Don't get me okay. wrong. I'm not saying I'm a good pool player. I'm just better than him. So how was D? He's okay. He's all he's right. Okay. Yeah, he's not. He's all right. He's was beatable. there a little dancing involved? I heard there was a little dancing involved. Uh, no, a little, 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 little trash talking. So. Little, yeah, a little dancing around with your money. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Oof. Yeah. Oh, did you? Finally, uh, buy a pool table so it, for the house. So the next no, time, no, 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 nor would, I, nor, nor would I want one. I'm not a big. I, I don't. I'm not a big pool player. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know, um, we we'll talk about productivity today, and 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 some of the the things that are available today, and you know, we talk about, um, you know, it's hard to find people. It's hard to hire people, and this, that, and the other. But yeah, I started thinking, look at some of the advantages that, that are out there today that weren't out there years ago and how you can make time on a job. You can absolutely make up a lot of time on a, on a job where you couldn't years ago. Just the, the act of staining a floor years ago compared to today and the, everything that went into that, um, you know, on your hands and knees with, with, with towels, wiping off, wiping on water popping. We all water popped with a sponge on our, or on, on our hands and knees guys would never do that anymore. I don't think they do. Um, uh, the stains took forever and a day to dry back in those days. So you can make up, there's a lot of ways you can make up time and make up money with, with today's technology. I think the old stains too, I always thought they were tough to work with. Like if you if, if you had left a stain rag on the floor for, you know, just to go get another stain rag and come back and start, it, mm-hmm. it was a son of a gun to to get that spot out of there. It seemed like they just penetrated more and they were definitely more finicky. And I don't know if it was, we just didn't know as much as we know now about, you know, burnishing mm-hmm. a floor and water popping. Yeah. But it just seemed like the stains back in the eighties were a a, a lot tougher to work with. I think. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, Some of them were the thick as molasses too. It seemed like, and hard to move. Mm. And, um, you know, even for that, the the sanding process, even before we had screens, we used to finish everything with off with 80 grit. So, and we had to change our, our, our paper quite often to make it uniform, but then going across that floor, it was even that it was just a lot more work uh edging the floor everybody I, that i knew back in those days would use a j-hook style of edging you know what i'm talking mm-hmm. about yeah you know what i'm talking about i know what you're talking uh, about yeah um so now the the staining techniques along with the uh the rotary sanders that are out there like a fest tool on, on the right setting holy smokes they make such easy work out of what was a, a big time chore back in the old days so 
you can make up a lot of time with the tools and techniques that of today that we didn't have years ago. So I, I think there are some advantages right now in oh, the trade. You know, we just, we just, I literally wrapped up an intermediate school today and, and drove home to get onto the podcast and Dittmer came out, Mr. Michael Dittmer came out and, um, you know, he led the uh, install portion of the class, but he brought his fest tools with us. And I, I know we've talked about fest tool and I know there's a lot of guys out there who have them, but it, every time I see a fest tool, um, cut medallions in, I, I mean, I didn't know that now the router goes on the track mm-hmm. and you can router out, you know, inlays and all sorts of stuff. It's, that fest tool really is an amazing piece of equipment. Think about, I'm glad you brought the fest tool up because think about the time, you know, there was a time we didn't have fest tool. I mean, you know, remember when nobody had fest tool, you know, when no one had the, um, the um, fine undercut jam saws, look how much they've made our life easier. You, you can make up probably 30% time today over what you could do years ago, easily on a job just by tools and techniques, excuse me. <coughs> I don't know where that came from. <coughs> Probably that wasp is getting into my bloodstream now. That's it, yeah, they, they, everything's starting to swell up. Mm-hmm. Well, this will be good, it'll be on live TV. There you go. I always thought one of these days, one of those live TV things, someone's gonna die. It's gotta happen. You ever watch Alone in Alaska Wilderness? Oh and the last, uh, the last uh, person that, yeah. that survives gets a half a million dollars. Real? Oh, I haven't seen that one. No, yeah. that's a new one. Yeah, I love. It. I mean, well, what I'm do you mean so- the last person that survived? Are people dying during this? No, show? no, no. The, that survives the ordeal. I mean, you know. So you, you don't know. I think there's like ten people that get dropped off in the wilderness. Then this was uh, British Columbia, I think. No, I mean, um, uh, yeah, British Columbia. So. You don't know how 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 many people are staying in, how many people are dropping out. Oh, you have only have, you have a few survival tools, but you got to fish and hunt and everything to survive. And um, you know, there, there's bears, there's all kinds of bears out there. One of these days, somebody's going to get eaten by a bear or a cheetah or 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 wrapped up with a uh, anaconda snake and die. And you're going to be watching it. Probably, you'll be the you'll be the lucky one mm-hmm. getting to watch that. Yeah. Remember, remember uh, the the crocodile man, whatever was the 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 guy yes. in uh, Australia, Steve. Uh, Steve. Yeah. Uh, Steve something. Yeah. Yeah. The crocodile he, guy. He died, but by some sissy animal, not a crocodile. It was like a blowfish or something in the in the. No, in the it, sissy animal. It was a it was a a ray, a stingray. He got stung by a stingray right in the chest. Yeah. Come on. God. <laughs> You're tough, man. You really do live by that sheep. You know, lions don't care what sheep think, do you? Well, You're a lion. Um, yeah. The man, the man, all, the, all his life, he was around alligators or, or crocodiles, wherever they were, and then he dies by a stingray. That's just a little strange. Look, man, when you enter the water, you are you're out. Okay. You're oh, I'm your definitely. And I don't out. care how good you can swim. Yeah. When you're in the water, forget about it. Yeah. Okay. Forget about it. Yeah. And I I kind of agree with you. For a guy like him, you thought he was going to be taken down by a shark or something like that, an alligator, yeah. crocodile, yeah. but Sting, stingray. Yeah, but those are sometimes those things can get pretty damn big though. Yeah. I feel like somehow I could have avoided that. Yeah, I see you. I I see what's going in your head. Yeah, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have done that to the Highlander. I see the ray coming at me in the chest. I grab it with this arm, move it over, grab it by the tail, <laughs> put it over my knee, spank it. Send You're it the same the- guy. You're the same guy who punches the great white in the nose when he comes right at just. Mm-hmm. Okay, so even the even the fine tool. And um, I know I know there's some different different types of products that, that do the same thing. We used to use a Chinese back saw, and I, I I'll still say it's the most accurate way to you could do a, a undercut a door jam. I think they're spectacular tools. But 
what for doing inside corners the the fine saw or tools like that oh my gosh man the amount of time you could save on, on with the tools like that is unreal i mean you remember when you were young i mean really young come on right yeah and you'd be using digging out a patch using a chisel yeah say to yourself man if there was only something that would just go straight down yes yes yeah and you're like well it'll, that, yeah that's yeah. impossible you can't do that and you see the old timers really taking care of the chisels, wrapping them up in cloth and putting them, you know, come on, man. That's unnecessary yeah. now. <laughs> you throw the, we just use a, the, the blades and throw them away. Although I saw a guy the other day had a good idea uh, for uh, putting expansion in a floor using those blades. Uh, like we used to use washers for, uh, for expansion. I thought that was a good idea, whoever that was. Mm. But uh, yeah. Do you remember how ex- expensive those blades were yes great when the when when you've when they first got when everybody started you know oh the fine tool i I remember the first time i saw was nwfa school and i borrowed it about seven times asking steve seaball hey uh you know if i borrow this i'll send it back to you i got something i needed to do Mm -hmm. you know and he goes yeah yeah and i had to go out and buy a blade and i was like i think i should just buy one and yeah get the blades with it yeah, it was almost like buy the blades, get the saw for free. Those mm-hmm. blades were brutal. Not, they're not anymore, but yeah, you know, uh, my my fine tool, the the first one I bought was it was like a heavy duty metal one back then. They changed the components or something, but it was fifteen hundred dollars for that tool. Oh my gosh! Uh, same thing. My laser, I had a laser, you know, a laser for for you know, for like for herringbone or for scoring up a room or whatever, it was about 1500 bucks. I get they're getting for a hundred bucks now. Yeah. Bum, bum gave me one for Christmas. Yeah. The Husky. It yeah. looks awesome. There you go. Uh, mine was the POS you know what else five. I've been doing with that. What? I'm shot. Sanding so, corners and stuff like that with it. I was late laser. No, no. With the, uh, hmm. the, the Husky fine tool. Oh yeah. 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 It comes with a corner attachment and I thought, yep. oh, let me give this. I bet I looked at the thing for four years mm-hmm. and go, oh, that's stupid. Never do. Yeah. I'm going to never use that. Mm-hmm. And then I needed to use it. And I was like, oh, geez, here's another thing. Yeah. Another thing just sat around for years and I didn't look at it. And mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you also, look at, look at the, uh, uh, another thing com- compared to years ago was, is the uh, open concept rooms, the wide, the big, big, wide open rooms. Where you can make really good time. Some of these older homes, they're like, you know, boom, boom, little boxes, little squares, little, you know, especially we had to do borders and everything uh, around them. This wide plank now, six, seven, eight inch wide plank. Do you know we used to we used to put in toothpick floors that was one inch wide? You know how long it is to go across that floor at one inch at a time? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I, I, versus I, I, I dropping know. in an eight inch board. So all these things that we don't have going on our side, um, the milling is much better than it's ever been. Back in the day, that, that, I mean, the milling was awful. Um, the the laminate floors back then, you know, we, we had negative connotation, so now we call them engineered floors. The wear layer on them was terrible. Um, now you've got, you know, nice thick wear layers on these floors that can be sanded many times over. Um, pre-sanded floors. We can basically just put a buffer to them and it starts staining. So there is a lot of ways to make money now that you couldn't do in the old days. Mm. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying the job is any easier. I mean, it's still a tough job. Don't get me wrong. I make no bones about it. Um, but the, the, the tools, as far as look at the uh, sanding aluminum oxide, um, those diamond, um, the diamond, the bone of diamond plates, they've changed everything that that's a that's a that was a shocker i mean i i had seen those before and and never even thought about putting that on a hardwood floor Mm -hmm. and so then when bona came out you know i started playing with him and everything i I mean i just thought it was just going to shred the floor yeah Yeah. now there's got to be a lot of old timers like me out there like you can't put that on a floor you'll Mm -hmm. destroy it and yeah my gosh, was I ever shocked where 
we would use that diamond plate and then the next cut the second cut is a 50 green on the power drive yeah, yeah. and forget about it it's perfect i mean it is just a, a definite game changer but the speed yeah the speed of it is just insane look at the old days what when you came across aluminum or let's say god forbid you get to a job and you didn't realize it was a little bit of oxide it's like oh you know, you know there's there's times when you feel like you hit the lottery this is one of those times like oh no what yeah. oh no and then you start thinking about what your week is going to be like then you look mm-hmm. at the amount of sandpaper that's in your van you go oh, that's not gonna it, it, and then you look at your profits because it's all going to sandpaper and the time then you got to get the scraper out hook the corners and everything a little oxide and nothing's yeah nothing's working it's laughing right. at you yeah yeah so gosh and that man. first aluminum oxide pre-finished floors they were loaded mm-hmm. they were loaded with aluminum well we did some say, mirage floors that were just like holy mackerel yeah they were brutal they say aluminum oxide is the fourth hardest substance known to man so you know you you put a sandpaper to that it's gonna it's gonna be a, a struggle but them diamonds man so much easier so you've got milling is better the, the equipment is better the the uh the the width of the boards the uh the the rooms so much the, the staining is dries faster easier to buff on you don't have to worry about it so much the the uh back in the old days with poly you'd have to three thousand square foot you got the first coat on well you got to bring out the buffer you got to bring out the vacuum you got to tack it or today you could coat it as long as you're with our with our finishes within 48 hours walk in just coat it again so, you know, I started thinking about that when we I started thinking about doing shows. But man, there there's some really you 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 know look at the differences. I think there's some pretty good advantages right now. Absolutely, so, I I couldn't agree more. But I think there's a huge disadvantage too. I know what you're going to say. What am I, I going to say? Tell me. I think you're going to say social media. Really damn close. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say the internet. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. because, you know, part of my job is working the tech line. Mm-hmm. And the lunatics that these poor guys, you know, my son included, have to deal with. The calls that I get, I get homeowners calling me, asking me questions before the job has even started. So they can tell the contractor what to do and to make sure that he's doing his job right. See, it is scary. It is absolutely scary what, what some of the, what these guys are dealing with now, with as far as homeowners. Uh, let's face it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you, you've had the same thing. People, people were just glad that we showed up when we said we were going to show up, and happy that their floors were done. What actually these guys are going through or mm-hmm. you're california so maybe it was different no no i was gonna say well back then it was just expected i mean we didn't have the issues that you know i think today the guys are challenged with was labor shortage but you're 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 in a unique position to hear all those complaints uh from homeowners and you're the reason like i would never want to be a fishing guide you know what i mean because you take something that you love and all of a sudden, all negative comes to you. Boom, 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 or, or you know what I mean? And, and it kind of so you get it. You you're seeing the worst of it. Oh yeah. So I think it's, that makes it tough. Uh, one thing that I have learned though is, you know, because I get calls from the homeowner. You know, I don't think he put the hardener in because <laughs> I didn't see him do it. And <laughs> oh yeah, oh. Yeah. And, what what would happen if he didn't put the hardener in or what would happen if he didn't use a sealer i read it needed a sealer and so on your, la- on your last day of work you could really have some fun <laughs> i have fun now oh, oh, oh that crazy. house is gonna blow up i yeah yeah i have some fun now okay yeah. every once in a while i get the mm-hmm. uh uh, uh can i speak to your boss please and i i always uh-huh. lean in and i go uh, i am the boss you're you're speaking to the boss huh. but then when i do that i have to immediately call d and say hey i i told somebody that i was the boss and he's like oh good thank you 
I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. You know, yep, yep. Because man, there are some. I mean, there are some. I, but I do tell the students, my students now. I'm saying, look, here's what they're looking for with you guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're reading directions. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they're measure. They're out there measuring their floor. They're counting what's in their garbage cans when you guys leave they're reading labels you gotta be you gotta be stealth man wow. you know wow. you gotta be well on the spot you know i'm not really familiar with with uh we don't have a um a front porch uh camera in our house or whatever and i've never really you know i don't go to other people's houses that much to where i you know whatever but my brother the other day he goes yeah we just got a new uh, front porch uh, uh, cameras on our porch. I said, oh, that's cool, whatever. I, w- I went over there, and I'm talking to him outside, and he sent me the video back. He, I was shocked at how much you could hear, how far away from the house you could hear us plain as day. And I wow. went, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful, man. Even with my brother. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is his knucklehead? He's sleeping in like yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. You, you got to be careful, man. That was, I was an eye opener for me. So, you know, there's cameras everywhere. That's, I feel, and I genuinely feel bad for the guys for that. Nobody, I don't care how good you are. I don't care what profession you're in. I don't care what you do for a living. Nobody wants someone listening to them all day long or with their eyes on them all day long when they're working. You, you just don't. And it's more it. than not now, guys are. Yeah, that's, guys are on film. They I, are. I, I, that I, that. I, see, I I have a really good attitude, but that would that would really, that would bug that would bug me. I uh, I had a crew come to a school up in Toronto, and uh, you know we were talking, you know just having a discussion. We said you know you got to. You got to pretend when you're in somebody's house, like you're being recorded. And the guy said, oh, I got a story. He goes, we were being recorded. Hmm. And he said, I get a call from the homeowner who's at work and said, your guys are stealing stuff out of my drawers. And, and the guy's like, that's impossible. Mm-hmm. It's my son. My son is the leader on that job and it's just him and another guy. And he goes, well, I'll send you the video. Don't you think it was the guy's son who was at the class? No kidding. Yeah. Who was stealing? He wasn't stealing anything. I've done it a million times. I'm working in a kitchen. I need a pencil, a thumbtack, a piece of tape. Yes. And I start rifling through drawers to look for where's your junk drawer where you keep all that crap. Well, when you're doing yeah. that and there's no sound because this was you know the older days when there was no sound it was just video it looked like he was ransacking the joint see you know they say you, you don't want to you, you shouldn't see somebody make the cake you know what i mean you just want to <laughs> eat the cake and and what back in the day when we did floors you just saw the cake when it was done here's yeah. your cake but now if you're watching every little move and every little this and you're micromanaging these guys and you know you're worried to death in the first place because they're in your home that's not a good healthy thing hire people you trust and i i say the same thing with our with with in my situation now you hire good horses and you let them horses run you know what i mean yeah uh, if you're gonna hire a floor guy that you don't trust don't hire that floor guy don't don't do it, don't do it to him and don't do it to you I, I Wayne, I just can't. I I bet we get twenty to thirty calls a day from lunatic homeowners. Wow. Who are, are I mean just and I've had uh, I mean a few times every day. Hmm. I'll finally ask, you know, what's going on? Are you having an issue or something? And they're like, Nope. You know, I just want to get enough information so I can make sure the guy is doing it right, and I can tell. Him. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I. I just want to give. I want to find out who the contractor is and give him a headshot. Yeah, hey, no, yeah. You're, you're, you know what? <laughs> now that I said that out loud, mm-hmm. I might try to do something like that. 
I might lose my job at Bona for saying that, but I would just love to give somebody a heads up and go, look, man, you're you're walking into a firestorm here, okay? Be careful. You're, you're like that Gary, was it Gary Stewart movie? Where, well, who, what was the movie when the lady was, was in, a, in her apartment building in New York and she's looked out the window and she saw a murder, but she's the only one that saw it. No one would believe her and she couldn't contact anybody. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Can't rear window? Anybody. Was that rear window? No. Rear win- Sounds like it was rear window. Might have been. Jimmy, I think it was Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart. Stewart. It was Jimmy Stewart. The Gary Stewart's Jimmy actually. Stewart. Yes. Uh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. That's a bad place for you to be. I, I, I wouldn't be very good at that job. Uh, that, that's tough. Because we're floor D, guys, man. He constantly reminds me that even if it's a even if it's a ridiculous homeowner that we still have to show the pride of Bona tech and training. We got to treat that homeowner just like we would treat somebody at our school. And uh, it's, I, it's tough, but he's right. And, and we try. Oh, to, yeah, I, I totally tried. get that. I totally, yeah. 100% I get that. Yeah. But it's, it's just, in, oh, you know, if you look, if we weren't floor man, if we were never floor man, I think it'd be a whole lot easier. Actually, I think sometimes this entire job would be easier if, if I knew less about floors than I do. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I didn't care as much, if we didn't know as much, it probably would be easier. Sometimes I wonder that. But the fact is, we do. And, and so that would be a tough, yeah, that's a tough spot for you to be in. I feel bad for you. No, don't, no, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I could be uh, scraping underneath radiators. Yeah, true that. So, so all right. Hey, so, uh, you know, uh, going back to what was the show about again? How uh, easy they got it? Well, no, no. no uh, uh, Just the improvements. Uh, pro- productivity and improvements. Productivity and, pro- and improvements. Yeah. Okay, you're going to like this one. Uh, you know, we just wrapped up our first uh, kind of Bona install school, and we're going to talk about that in the next show. Anyways, the final day was our sanding portion sanding and finishing and uh i was surprised how many guys showed up that for the install and everything they install but they don't sand so we had mm-hmm. some guys who were new to sanding today mm-hmm. i think we had like a half a dozen guys teaching them uh, so mike and i had them out you know teaching them how to drum and edge and all this and uh so we got them really good with the drum You know, we get some big panels in New Jersey, so guys can really, you know, each panel is 300 feet. So, Mm -hmm. you know, guys can really attack the the drum sander. Mm -hmm. So we did that for, I don't know, three or four hours. And when they get all done, I said, all right, next cut we'll do with uh, with the power drive. And we start, you know, working the power drive, put the lines out there and everything. And uh, so now these guys, they had never seen a power drive, never seen a drum, never seen a power drive. Mm -hmm. And there was one part of a floor. I said, leave it there, leave the finish and everything on, and I'll show you what we can do with the power drive. Well, these kids, they start power driving, and, you know, we turn everything off, start talking about something else. And Mm -hmm. one kid looks at me and he goes, why didn't we just start with this machine? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) he goes this just seems so much easier and i said listen yeah. partner if you think you're going to leave a bonus school that i'm teacher at mm-hmm. w- without knowing the drum i said you got to learn the drum first okay yeah. i just can't mm-hmm. start you out in a power drive no you, it's not fair you, you gotta you gotta earn your stripes a little bit yeah but it, it was funny that when you said you want to do this show today and i thought oh i can't wait to tell him what this kid mm-hmm. He was, he was probably, uh, you know, 22, and he's looking at me like, why the hell do we even uh, you know, hey, you the sense of that? Yeah, yeah you, d- you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's going to be um, interesting in the next, even, look what it's done in the last five years, the power drive, and oh. then wait for another five more years, what that yeah. machine is going to mean to the industry. 
So, I mean, when you talk about productivity and everything, that's, that's completely changed. We talk about it a lot, so I won't, I won't harp on it too much right now, but it's, it's really changed the game. No question. It, it was funny. He made like two or three passes on the, you know, it's a long pass. So he made yeah. two or three passes. He turned it off. He walks up to me and he goes, is that it? I, I, said, I said, yeah, that, <laughs> that's it. Whoa. Yeah. So it's raining. On him. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we talk about the, the amount of time to to finish a job. In the old days, or that you have a, a subfloor that was a little bit wet, and you had to wait. You would bring the fans in more. Blah blah blah. Uh, now with the Bona R five forty, you can you can cut that time down too. By you, know, we rarely get optimum conditions. You can put one coat of that on. And uh, you cut your time way, way down on these, and, and your liability, by the way. The adhesive is so much easier to spread than it was years ago. So, I, I you know, I think uh, that's my hot take. Guys in the intermediate school were using the stand-up trowel. And oh, were the, they? And the flow. Okay. We were using the stand-up trowel. We were using the flow. We were setting the uh, setting the starter rows with the um, vertical. vertical. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's just nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... All right, ten minutes and we're banging. You know, yeah, it was just insane. Pretty cool, and uh, the floor looks spectacular. Maybe uh, uh, Chris can put a picture of the floor that you guys did. That herringbone was beautiful. Yeah, wasn't that yeah. something? Uh, that's, yeah, uh, I love the color. What color was that, by the way? uh i think it was clay yeah it looked beautiful so all right so um there you go that's uh just uh when i said that's my hot take i'm kind of joking uh i got a list of slang words rob that you know for to get us up to the you know 2023 so we look appear more hipper than we are we're just trying oh. to work some of those words in okay okay mm-hmm so Maybe in the next episode we'll we'll slide some of them words in so we can. Oh, so I, thought guy, you were gonna give, I thought you were gonna give them to me now. Or no, I'm just no. putting you on blast right now. Putting me on blast? Yeah. What's that? Uh, to embarrass someone publicly over social media by denouncing <laughs> or exposing them. I actually didn't know what it meant until I read it. <laughs> I just thought I was giving you notice. <laughs> I told you I didn't have time to read emails. I was driving, right? Like right, a I, loony. I hear you. Yep. Okay. So there you go. There's a there's a little bit of a take on the industry. Uh, some positive stuff uh, um, that, uh, you know, yes, labor is a bit of an issue. It's a big issue. But there are some other, there's some positives to it as well. So uh, especially for the, 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 the kind of the one or two man shops. I mean, if you're trying to get a whole crew going, 16, 15 guys, which some guys are still able to do, which is, I'm amazed by it, mm. but uh, yeah, there's some things that uh, just consider as we go forward. So there you go. Rob, this has been another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. Please stay tuned for another episode. <laughs>